Hi world, this is the first one of nine separate videos I am going to be recording over the coming week to trail the big weekend workshop I'm doing in two weeks time and I'm going to be doing nine separate videos on each of the nine areas that I'm going to be discussing during this workshop and these are like tasters for what's coming up so it's of interest to students of astrology um, I'm going to be doing this live in front of an audience. I'm half sold out. There's still places left if you're interested. At On, on Saturday the 7th of October, uh, at about 10 a.m. in the morning, I'm going to be starting this process by giving a one-and-a-half-hour workshop on basically the language of astrology. This is just the beginner's part of it. And I'm going to be looking at the, the basic language of astrology and looking at the symbols of astrology, particularly uh, the meaning of the symbols of the planets, how they're made up. Because all of the symbols for the planets are made up of one of five different things. It's either they're, they're made up of a combination of a, a dot, a circle, a line, a crescent, or a cross. All of these combined have different meanings. For example, the dot represents one's essence and the circle around it represents a soul. So the symbol for the sun is the dot within the, so the circle. So the containment of one's essence in one's soul, one's sense of uniqueness. Uh, another example, for, for example, is the symbol of Pluto. You have the circle of soul contained by the crescent of spirit over the cross of matter. So to unify soul with matter, you have to engage with an essence of spirit inside yourself. It's a bit esoteric, and indeed the symbology of astrology does touch the esoteric, but there is a deeper meaning to this that borders on the alchemical. But it's not just the symbols of the planets. I'll also be looking at the basic meaning of the signs of the zodiac and how the symbols of the signs have changed over the years and the houses of the zodiac with a brief explanation of what, of what each house means. And the difference between the signs, the houses, the planets, and particularly the aspects. Now, it's a quick trailer of this in one sentence each. It's safe to say that planets represent energies. Each, each planet in the zodiac represents a particular energy that's inherent in each and every one of us. For example, um, Mars is the capacity to be projective and assertive, but also confrontational and aggressive. The moon is our capacity to be emotive and feelingful, whilst at the same time receptive and perhaps somewhat easily influenced. There's good and bad with everything. Uh, the sign of the zodiac that the planet is in shows how that planet manifests in and through you. It's the way you behave. And the house that the, of the zodiac that the planet is in shows the way that the outside world sees you as behaving. It's not the way you are, but it's the way you're seen as being. The aspects to planets are the things that link everything together. The aspects are the real strength of the horoscope. If you say, if you, if you use the analogy of a cake, then the aspects between planets are the body of the cake. The marzipan and the icing around the cake are the signs of a zodiac that contain the body. And the packaging, the plastic wrapping and the cardboard box around the outside is the houses of the zodiac, the way it's presented into the outside world. So we'll be look, I'm going to be looking at each planet in turn and looking at their positive as well as their challenging sides and particularly I'm going to be looking at how those planets have changed their meanings over their thousands of years particularly the outer planets which have only been around two or three hundred years how they got their names because each planet has a fascinating story about how they became named and as they became named and came into the consciousness of the planet as we became aware of them so their archetypes became more known about for example 
as Pluto was discovered in 1930, we had the underworld crime wave in America. We had the development of psychology into the conscious world with the development of um, Jung. Um, we saw the splitting of the atom and the, and the invention of the discovery of plutonium. Where Neptune was discovered, the, 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 the elusive, the vague, but also the spiritual, we saw the develop, first development of spirituality through mesmerism, hypnotism, through channeling, we saw the development of photography, the first drug wars, the first organized commercial brewing of alcohol. When Uranus was discovered, it was a time of revolution worldwide. When Chiron was discovered, it was a time of a holistic revolution. And I'll be expanding on all of these things for an hour and a half at 10 a.m. on Saturday, the 7th of October. This is the first of nine different videos I'm going to be doing, talking about what I'm going to be talking about on this workshop. And there's still about 30 places left. So if you want to come, if you're in, well, wherever you are, because there's people coming from all over the world for this, it's going to be limited to a maximum of 65 people. As I say, it's half sold out. Drop me a line, steve at stevejudd.co, and I'll send you an email with all the details about how it's going, what's happening. It's going to be recorded so the videos will be available in due course if you can't make it in person, but it's going to be much easier if you're in person. All right, I hope this has been interesting and um, catch you later. Bye.